It's Madden NFL 24, and it's presented by EA Sports. It's the Chicago Bears and the Washington Commanders, and it comes your way next. We are just inside the Beltway, about 10 miles east of the Capitol Dome as we come to you from FedEx Field here in Landover. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Chicago Bears taking on the Washington Commanders. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. A CD, these commanders, a last place ball club in 2022. In most cases, you'd say that was a lost season, but they finished 8-8-1, eight, eight 500. That would have won the NFC South. What kind of a chance do you give them in what is certainly a loaded NFC East? And you're exactly right about the division, so you have to be cautious about what you think with this team. They've got to continue to play excellent defense and get some improvement on the offensive side of the ball and establish who their quarterback is going to be. And then for the visiting Bears, they want to wipe the slate clean from 2022. Now, working in their favor, we've seen plenty of teams in the NFL make big turnarounds from year to year. What can the Bears do to you know, just get back to closer to maybe seven, eight wins, Charles? Well, they want to coalesce all this young talent that they're accumulating and guys that they brought in from the outside and start to build a culture, a feeling around this team that they know they can compete week in and week out. Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. So here come the Bears to take over on offense behind their third-year quarterback, former Ohio State Buckeye Charles, Justin Fields. We all knew Fields was an incredible athlete coming out of college and last season. He unleashed it upon the NFL. Ran for over 1,100 yards and would have broken the quarterback single season record if he had played the full season. He also threw 17 touchdown passes and that's the next jump for him. More consistency as a passer. Able to get away, dance into his left. Four yards the result on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. Fields going to keep it running right, and he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. A solid gain of seven yards that time on the keeper at a first down. And this is one of those plays that if you can use it to keep the chains moving, it's a good play. And not only that, it tends to tamp down the pass rushers because they have to recognize this play and stay at home. The quarterback uses it well. Read option, keeps it, and picks up a first down with some nice running. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And that one never got off the ground. He's going to be stopped up well behind the line of scrimmage. It was Deron Payne who got in there to make the play. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. On second down, here's Fields. Uh, nowhere for Fields to turn, and down he goes. Jonathan Allen breaking through to get him to the ground. It's a loss of seven. Allen was his consistently productive set for the commander's defensive line in 2022. Seven and a half sacks, couple forced fumbles, a big-time leader. No surprise there as he adds another one to his career total. And he's going to go down again. And while all of that was going on with a sack, it appears, unfortunately, we have an injured player. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. so they send out Trenton Gill. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. The commander's set to go to work on offense, and they've handed the controls to this man in his second NFL season, former Tar Heel Sam Howell. 
Hal got the nod from Commander's leadership to be the team's starter this year. A nice bump for last year's fifth round pick. One start as a rookie and didn't look bad at all winning the team's finale. And let's not forget, this is a guy who was once viewed as a first round pick. So there's plenty of promise hidden beneath the surface. Hal's throw taken in by Samuel. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. First down, how to throw. He'll check that down to Gibson out of the backfield. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. So they'll get nothing out of that play, and it'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Now they go play action with Hal. That one thrown across his body, and it's incomplete. He was trying to hit Thomas that time, and it's third down. Hal throwing on third down here. Here's a diving catch right side. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 29-yard line. Excellent play there on third down. Give him 25 yards. Well, another completion right there. And again, Charles, good time in the pocket. That offensive line on this opening drive been really solid. They've been more than solid. They've really tamped down the pass rush and kept him safe in the pocket, able to look around, find his target, and deliver. He's got to make sure he tells the offensive line in the huddle. Thanks, fellas. Let's keep it going. They'll go play action. Howell. And this is dropped. Oh, boy. A chance for a big play early, but he could not secure it. And that is not what you expect from a receiver of his caliber. Sometimes you get a little ahead of yourself. You don't look it in, and all of a sudden it's on the ground. A surprise to all. Faking the handoff, Howell. That's into the hands of his tight end, Bates. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Another throw for Howell. Looking for Thomas, but that's intercepted. Picked up by Jalen Johnson. And the Bears are going to get the football back at their own 17. Yeah, he's just trying to throw this ball into the hole in the zone, but those windows can open and close quickly, especially in the middle of the field. So if the timing's not right, we'll see interceptions like that one right there. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Now second and three. A man who led the league in yards per carry last year. It's Khalil Herbert. And he'll get about three up past the 25. Here comes third in the length of the football. They'll run with Herbert. And that one going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. He lost two and it brings up four. 
No daylight for him to run through there, and he ran into the defensive tackle, and that guy blocks a whole lot of daylight as it is. He is truly a big man who just made a big play. Now here's Trenton Gill now. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36 yard line. It'll wind up just a 35 yard punt, no return. And the Commanders will take over with a first and 10. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Short throw to the tight end, Thomas. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Throwing here, Howell. Flushed out right. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Opted to run for it. The decision a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. He was certainly quick to atone for his early game interception. Instead of making another mistake forcing something, he reset himself and found a lane to pick up the first down. Hal to the air on first and 10. That's off the mark, incomplete. So many offenses want to include their running backs into their passing offense and be able to swing the ball out or check it down to them. But sometimes those guys are just not as comfortable catching the ball as they are running it. Second and 10. Second down, Hal back to pass. And that one's gonna come up a little short. It's incomplete. Was trying to get it to Terry McLaurin, but now it'll be third down. Al, he'll look to throw it. He'll dump that off to Gibson, complete. Certainly not what they wanted there. No gain, and it's fourth down. Now they couldn't get anything going there out on the right side of the flat of the swing pass. And didn't we have a discussion with their staff about wanting to get the backs more involved in the Big passing emphasis. game? Huge emphasis for this game, but obviously the defense had other plans and really made a nice play. And now the putter, Tress Way, as he sends this one away. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. The Bears now ready to take over again. We've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase, but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Here's a second and five now from the 25. They're going to look to throw. And he will find the open man. It's DJ Moore. And they're able to get this one across the 35. First catch for him. It's good for a dozen and a first down. So, Charles, yeah, take nothing away from this young man under center because I know people think he's got a very bright future in this league, but I have to figure the defensive coordinators love the thought of squaring off against a rookie quarterback. And it's a fumble. Second and short now following the fumble. He'll look to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back complete. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. That one a first down pickup of eight. First and ten, it's Herbert. And brought down, but able to get it 
to their 30-yard line. That good for 19 at a first down. That's his longest run of the first quarter. And, Charles, we talked before the game about them needing to establish the run game. They'll be looking for more of that. And they got to the perimeter. So that tells me that that's part of the game plan of what they want to get done today. So they'll have some complimentary runs where he'll run it to the inside. But it appears that when they want the big yardage, they think they can get to the outside and make it happen. Now a play fake here on first down. A quick throw there is incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice or maybe even routes versus air because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's more. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Partner, he got the DB on his horse on that play. He certainly sold like it was going to be a deep route before breaking it back on the comeback towards the sideline. Now a first and 10 at the 11. They'll set up a throw. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. Uh, who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. On second down, a run with Herbert. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive, and normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, it looked like the offensive line let him down a little bit. Yeah, allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff him for a loss. And this will be caught by his big wide receiver. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. And he's not going to get the first. I don't even think he made it back to the line of scrimmage. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And this 11-play drive is going to lead to nothing on the scoreboard. And defensively, they were ready for that. A full-on blitz on fourth down, and they stop them short of the marker. Oh, and someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense, and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. That'll go for a gain of 13, helping big time to get away from that end zone. First down. I guess it's good we can't really read the mind of the defensive coordinator now, huh? Had him pinned back there deep, give up that run. Can't be happy. Yeah, whatever was whatever is in his mind right now, we probably couldn't say over the air. Gets this out quickly to Dodson. And they'll blow that one up back at the 16-yard line. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. We're scoreless after one. Second quarter now from our nation's capital, and it's Washington in possession of the football. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss as they've got it as we resume action. Try to lob it in there, but it's incomplete. And this offense on third down today, just one for three thus far. This is third and 11. Yeah, Howe will throw it. And he is caught, fighting his way through contact. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. What a play that turns out to be, 36 yards. Not really any offense 
for them to speak up here in this first half. Maybe that's what they needed, that big play. Yeah, and it seems that maybe everything changes right there. They've been a little slow out of the gate. We've seen that, but that one big play, that could spark a big burst right here. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Shotgun handoff to Gibson. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's a second and seven. Al now to throw it. Short throw there, caught by Thomas. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large-body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. So a couple of first downs on this drive, but it's looking like another empty possession. And those empty possessions are certainly starting to pile up. So the adjustments that teams talk about all the time have to be taking place. They've got to analyze what's breaking down and figure a way to fix it. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this will remain a scoreless game. Wow, partner, it's almost a little jarring to see a holder set up on the other side of midfield. I haven't brought out my binoculars to make sure on that one. But that is showing an awful lot of confidence in a kicker to try and hit from 61 yards. And this one winds up no good. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And last time, they had it fourth and goal, rolled the dice, didn't get it. Now they've got to put that behind him, try to put together another drive. Hey, a simple tip of the cap, a nod of the head to the defense. Congratulations, you got us last time. But you didn't hold us the whole time. We got down to position. We were able to be in position to score. Let's go ahead and attack again. Continue to have that kind of confidence. Not worry about the one play that didn't allow him to get into the end zone. And this time they'll be trying to get it into the end zone. We'll see what they do. Second down and inches. There's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. Two yards, good enough for a first. They got a completion there. That's clearly an example of one side happy, the other side not very happy. Defense, very <laughs> Hey, take one or two yards. We're good with that. Offense, you've got to expect to get more on the passing play. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They'll look to throw here. His throw incomplete. Cole Komet, the intended receiver. And it's second down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. Back to throw again. That's to Moore, and he's got it. Touchdown, Bears. A great play there. 26 yards. And the Bears post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Cairo Santos on to try the extra point. And he's got it to make it 7-0 in favor of the Bears. A drive there of just four plays. And it concludes with a touchdown reception by D.J. Moore.
After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. Now Howe. Short throw to the tight end, Thomas. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and that'll make it second down. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. From the 35, back to work on second and four. Powell. Oh, and his early struggles continue. Here's another one intercepted. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. There's D.J. Moore as he and the rest of the offense head back out there. He's doing what he's capable of, having a solid game. Not, not the most amazing game. He's not over 100 yards, but a good game so far. And you just know that mentally, he feels like he's one catch away from turning it into a great game and starting on that road. And the defenders are well aware of that, too. They've got to figure out a way to not let that escalate. Keep him right in this zone here and call it a day because otherwise, he can really decimate them. Better believe they are well aware of his playmaking ability. From the 35, here's a second and eight. They'll run this with Homer, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. Oftentimes, when you see a running back get bunched up in the backfield, it's usually because the defensive tackle is eating up blockers for others to make the play. Not in this case. Still needing 10 yards. Now it's third down. He'll look to throw. All the commanders are going to get there as he's taken down. Jonathan Allen. That is now two sacks for him here in this first half. I think you saw the same thing that I did there, partner. Remember, he's their backup quarterback, so the last thing they need is to lose another one right here on the sack. Looks like he's going to be okay, though. Yeah, he looked like he was favoring something in the left leg. Appears to be fine now, but you're right. That O-line, they got to protect him. And this one sails out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. Well, still early in this one, Charles, but the last time this offense was out there, they threw their first interception of the ball game, so try to avoid repeating that mistake here on this drive. And to put a positive spin on it, at least it happened in the first half and not in a close game in the fourth quarter, but you're absolutely right, partner. One of the last things this offensive quarterback wants to witness again in this game. Kind of an obvious question, Charles, but anything you try to avoid after your first pick or you say, it's one interception, we're still in the first half, I'm about to do the same thing. I think you want to avoid playing scared, you know, and put it into the mind of the quarterback that you've lost confidence in him. Make sure you get some throws that he's going to be able to complete, make him feel good about himself, and continue to run your offense. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. On first and 10, it's Gibson. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Sometimes I think these defensive tackles get a little bit of a bum rap. We just see them as big guys that eat up blockers for others to make tackles. Oftentimes they're quicker than they get credit for. And this time he uses quickness to make a play. Here's Hal to throw on second down. Short throw there, caught by Thomas. So the completion good for six yards. And it'll be third down. Obviously this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do, you got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end, take some easier completions. Okay, interception last drive. There he hits the reliable target. 
This offense so far on third down, two for five to this point. This will be third and six. Meanwhile, this one knocked down in the backfield. It's incomplete. Not many boos just yet from this home crowd, but they may be starting soon as I'm starting to detect an uneasy murmur through this crowd. This offense, they've been lifeless in this first half. And now here's another punting situation in a fourth down. Tress Way on fourth down is sent out to punt. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. The Chicago offense set to get started. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? here on first and ten and maybe the wrong read there is he's going to go down immediately officially it's a one yard loss that's going to bring up second and 11 they'll set up to throw and that one on the money to Claypool downfield Big play there on the catch and run. 79 yards. And what a letdown after a huge play. He's going to pull this in and then set sail for the end zone. And he nearly made it too. But he's going to be tracked down just short of the goal line. So a big play there that's going to set him up with first and goal at the one-yard line. After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. Foreman and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage it's a loss of a yard there and it's second down Brandon one thing about blitzes they really confuse offensive linemen at times and what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you if you don't you saw the end result defensive tackle end up making the play back at the two now here's second and goal back to throw to the end zone, but it's incomplete. Darnell Mooney, the target there. But now it's third and goal. Herbert. Diving for the end zone, and he'll get there. Touchdown. Well, they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times, that's a passing play. And the kicker just has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although, I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. Now the point after try for Santos. And it's good to make it 14-0. That time, a six-play drive. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. Well, after the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Washington ready to try again on offense. And they're in a bind early here, down 14 0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive. But at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work 
get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. On first down, right back to Gibson. Hustling free near the 40. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Ball on the 36 now. Here's second down at a yard. Once more, Gibson. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. A give up the middle to Gibson. And he will make his way back to where he started from, and that's all as we will make our way to the two-minute warning. Second down, Hal now. They'll set up the screen for Gibson. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. That's a nice design there. But sometimes, though, you get so many blockers out ahead of you, they kind of slow you down and force you to adjust. You always appreciate guys trying to help you, but maybe one less there could have turned this into a bigger game. Third and four. Back to throw. Howell. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Brings up fourth down, solid coverage by the Bears' D. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no game. Field goal unit and Joey Sly now. From the right hash, this from 45 yards away. Sly able to put this one through, and they will get themselves on the board here at 14-3. Well, still trailing here, but they do get the late field goal. Now their defense will try to keep this score right where it is heading into the locker room. Yeah, and trailing it to break, you obviously don't want to go in off of a negative play. Give them credit for that one. Finding a way to put points on the board, give them any type of a spark, anything to build off of as they try and plan a comeback. After the main field goal, here's Sly to kick this one away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. We switch the attention now to Khalil Herbert as this offense comes out for their next drive. It's the second quarter. His team has the lead, but... I think he's hoping for a little bit more production out of himself. And we often talk about preaching patience to a runner when things are a little bumpy in the early going. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And this ball recovered by the offense. But remember, they cannot advance it here in the final two minutes of the half. So this will be blown dead, and it'll come back to the spot of the fumble. We always hear a lot of veterans on the defensive side of the football. They talk about smelling blood in the water, putting pressure on a rookie. They got to him there to force it free, but couldn't recover it. And you mentioned the pressure. Rookie quarterback, you're going to bring more pressure at him at all times because you don't know how he's going to hold up. He was fortunate there. Luck was on his side, able to recover that fumble. And he'll just keep two hands on the football as he'll be taken down after a short pickup. Now we get a stoppage because, as you can see, a member of the commanders in some obvious discomfort. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, are going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Once again, they'll keep it on the ground. And they'll indeed stop him on third down. And now what do you want to do with your timeouts? Now Washington going to use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Now here's
here's Trenton Gill on to punt. Fair catch, single four, and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it will be Washington football now with a first and 10. Antonio Gibson and the Washington offense ready to go here once more. And I'm wondering if maybe they don't go away from him on this drive a little bit. He's He's been great, but they haven't scored a lot of points. I think they still have to show him as a threat. Make sure he touches it a few times. But as you pointed out, Use him as a decoy a little bit and get the ball in the hands of some other people in order to put more points on the board. But he's done a really nice job of establishing them with his running. Yeah, he's established himself well. Now can they put more points up? Now second and five. Here's Hal. And that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Throwing here, Howell. seconds now showing on the clock yeah it's still early in the football game and you hate to give away possessions but instead of forcing something downfield on third down that was a wise move to just get it to the sideline now the former Oklahoma Sooner Tress Way on to punt the football he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away fair catch called it's taken in right at the 20 yard line so a change of possession here on the punt. And there'll be time for maybe one final play before halftime. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we have reached halftime here in an 11 point contest. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a solid first half for running back Khalil Herbert. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. for the second half 14 to 3 our score as we are back underway on EA Sports this is Gibson this taken in right around the goal line and he's up across the 25 and down at the 28 the commanders up first on offense as we begin this third quarter by no means certainly are they out of this contest two score game start of the third quarter but you feel like if they don't get points and then they give up points then it can become a slippery slope. This feels like an important possession. Yeah, and that slope becomes even more slick if you come away empty-handed on this drive because then you give them a chance to extend their lead. You need some kind of points here, even if it's just a field goal. It's what I call one of those calming drives, try and slow things down a little bit. And from the 34, here's second and four. Operating from the gun, Howell. Short throw to the tight end, Thomas. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. Straight 
straight ahead, Gibson. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second and six. Operating from the gun, Howell. That's going to be caught downfield by McClellan. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 25-yard line. They got 29 yards that time. And that's one of the better plays we've seen this offense put together so far. They haven't been able to get on track much at all. But listen, they're only down a couple of scores with the rest of this quarter and the entire fourth remaining. So, stranger things have happened. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Back to throw. Howell. And his throw's going to be incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Faking the handoff, Howell. Oh, he'll want that one back, incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department, third down. They haven't been able to stop them so far this series, but getting a nice little stand from their defense now. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. And once more, Hal back to the air. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Field goal unit and Joey Sly now. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. Sly able to put this one through. And a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14-6 to now. So three points, maybe not a grand prize at this stage, but it does get them back within one score. It certainly does because now they stay within shouting distance. So that means everyone on your sideline stays engaged in this game. They know they still have a shot. After the main field goal, here's Sly to kick this one away. Scott on the return, out of the end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 21. Here's Fields. Eluding, and he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Montez Sweat, the man that time to fight in and drop him. I'm sure a lot of time was spent in the locker room, Charles, with talking with his defense about setting a tone here in the third quarter when you're down on the scoreboard. Sack like that, maybe that can get them going. Yeah, you have to believe exactly what you just said. And they got together and said, let's be some change agents here. Let's go ahead and turn things around. Let's be the force that gets us going here in the second half and puts us in a position to find a way to win the game. Five yards gets them back near the original line of scrimmage as they'll be left with a third and long. up here tough spot needing 11 yards to pick up the first throwing on third down fields that's complete to his running back Herbert and he'll get this to the 23 but that'll be well short of what he needed he did his best to just get four out of that but not enough and now fourth down how about that strategy there Brandon third down they just said we've got faith in our tacklers we'll give you the short stuff and just decided to protect the sticks so every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, 
I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and they will take over first and 10. The Commanders preparing for their next possession. And Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's their turn now to go out and try and get some points. 17 yards is the pick up there for number 17. First down, Hal to throw. This pass hauled in by Dotson. Only able to gain a couple there, and that will bring up second down. Hal, he'll look to throw it. Middle of the field, he's got McLaurin. So just three yards on the completion there. And now third down and six to go. Al looking to throw again. Hit as he throws there, incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. They'll break the huddle here and go for it. This is fourth down. So here we go, fourth down. Hell. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And this is going to wind up working out just fine as he'll have a Washington first down. And an exhale there as they convert on fourth. And that's a big pickup of a first down. And you know that all week, both sides of the ball, offense and defense, are going through every situation. And in this case, the offensive guys had the right play dialed up because defensively, you work on fourth down situations as well. And deflating for the defense. They can't get the stop here. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. What we've seen so far in this game, they are not going to allow a big shot over the top. You can have whatever you want underneath. They'll give you that, but they're not going to let you beat them deep. Now a second and ten. Another throw for Howe. Short throw there, caught by Thomas. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. Buying time to his left. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. But nowhere to throw it, decided to scramble, and a nice job seat. He got the yardage that he needed. Yeah, and his teammates are certainly going to appreciate that effort, even if his coaches don't, because they would have wanted him to slide and protect himself. But he chose team gain over personal protection. And he is in to the end zone. 19 yards for Antonio Gibson. And the Commanders have cut the lead back down to two. And while no one on the offensive line will get the six points next to their name, they should be credited with this one. Tremendous blocking to get the runner into the end zone. And now the Washington offense going to stay out there and go for two. A toss running left. It's Gibson, and he will dive into the end zone, and the two-point conversion is successful. They get the conversion, and Charles, when you only have two yards to go, what do you think of the toss play? Because initially it kind of sets you back a little bit. It does, especially if you get a lot of pressure coming towards you. But if you can get to the edge, if you seal the edge with your blocking off in your tackle or your tight end on what they call the play side where the ball goes, you can get to the corner, and that allows those big guys to get out ahead of the runner. This 
This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And the drive will begin at the 25 as Scott is going to stay in the end zone. Another drive coming up for this Chicago offense. And their lead has evaporated in this third quarter. It's tied once more as they begin with a first and 10. Starting on the ground with Herbert. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. A loss of a full three yards and now it's second down. Brandon, that's what you call being manhandled at the point of attack. And I know the offensive line gets a lot of blame for that one. But occasionally, the defense just knows what you're going to do. Maybe they scouted it perfectly. Maybe someone tipped it off. But on that play, it had no chance. Fields throw there, complete to Mooney. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. Fields now to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have the Bears first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. Well, you can absolutely feel the thought process there. They just gave up the touchdown. So in the huddle, they're telling each other, you don't want to give it back now on a three and out. Nice job of making sure that they wouldn't, and they pick up the first down. Herbert powering up the middle to the 43, second down. Now a second and six. Back to throw, Fields. And the Washington pressure gets to him. He will go down. Multiple defenders get to him there, and that is the sixth time he's been sacked in this ball game. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. So now following the sack, Fields and the Bears looking at third down and long. Here's Fields. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. From Commander's territory now, it's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. On the option right is Fields. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. Two yards the loss, second and 12. A handoff for Herbert. And he's got it across the midfield, striping into Washington territory. He's across midfield. It's been a pretty long drive. This will be play number nine. And they need 10 yards out of it on third. Now Fields. That is caught by Herbert. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. Here comes the Bears punter now as he's on to kick it away. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot him. Here comes Antonio Gibson as he's set for another drive. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone, and now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And, of course, with that, comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage. And again, that second score here in the third quarter. 
third quarter, all tied up. This is second and 10. A give running right, Gibson. Nice footwork at the 25. And a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Hal throwing on third down here. And he is going to be taken down. And that should be the final play of this third quarter. They dial up the corner blitz that time, and it delivers to the tune of a nine-yard loss. Three quarters have come and gone. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now at FedEx Field. All square, 14 apiece to score as we get ready for the fourth quarter. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Taylor now returning it. A beautiful fake. It'll be a 41-yard punt. Give them five on the return. And the Bears take over. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity all tied in the fourth quarter. Now Herbert to start the drive. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, they set the power set out there, and their job is to be man-on-man man and move people so they can run the football. But that time, too many men didn't get moved in the box defensively. They end up throwing him for a loss. Fields. And there's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. It'll be a gain of five. And now third down and six to go. to throw his fields. And again, back to Komet. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Fields to Komet there for a Chicago first. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Here's a give to Herbert. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. This is Homer. And some strong running there as he's down just shy of the 20 on the edge of the red zone. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down for the Bears. The running game fully in sync, 1 to 11 on that play. And sometimes it comes from the offensive coordinator understanding what he thinks the defense is going to do and dialing up the perfect play. Sometimes the quarterback, though, can look at the defense, realize he needs to change it to a run. And that gets it done in a big way as well. Now, here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. Chase Claypool, the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. Now it's Fields. Flush to his right. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. Mooney, the motion man right. They'll get it forward to him on the touch pass. And he'll be stopped well short. Only two yards there, fourth and three. That's a nice job there defensively being able to diagnose that little touch pass. 
Mendoza saw it coming, converged on him before he could get much out of it. So a big one coming now for Cairo Santos. This to break our fourth quarter tie. Santos' kick is up and through, and they take a 17-14 lead. So he waited on the sideline for his first chance in the ball game, and it didn't come until the fourth quarter, but he connects there, a big one to give him the lead. Boy, you talk about coming in cold. I don't care how many times you kick it into a net. You're not really ready when you go out there and all that beef is coming at you trying to block the kick. Big spot, and he delivers. Following the made field goal, out instead is the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick this away. This is Gibson. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So out comes Washington's offense to take over. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. Takes this up just short of the 30, but he was able to avoid that earlier tackle. Nice move. 92 yards on the ground for him so far. Here's second and three. They'll go again with Gibson. And he's able to get out to the 32 block down there. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. handoff for Gibson and he slips up past the 45 before being tackled a gain of 14 first down commanders correct me if I'm wrong but I think they had three tight ends in on that set and these guys are punching really well I use boxing analogies a lot a lot of coaches have told me that when you line up to run the football it's 10 fist fights along the line of scrimmage right you've got to win your share these three tight ends, they almost always win their fist fights. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw down field, incomplete. Trying to erase that deficit all at once. One big shot. He took it. Unfortunately for him, incomplete. Here's second and ten. Powell, another throw on second down. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Off play action, it's Hal. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. Here's Tressway now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this one goes angling out of bounds, and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. The Bears offense out there set and ready to go. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Jamin Davis there to bring him down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. To give you an idea of how accurate he's been throwing the football, we're in the second half. That's just his second incompletion. Well, if he's that locked in, that means everyone's locked in because to me it's like throwing a no-hitter in baseball. The pitcher may get the credit, 
A lot of people making plays behind him in the field. Fields hit and the ball is loose. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. When that ball popped free, we could hear it all the way up here. Those guys down on the field alerting everyone to the fumble. He's lucky that his offensive mates picked him up and jumped on it. Yeah, and you have to think to yourself, and I'm sure they've been echoing it on the sideline and into the huddle. Guys, we have the lead. Just take care of the football. Don't make it easier for them to start to make a comeback. Here comes the Bears punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And a fair catch taken here right at about the 40-yard line. They call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Commanders will take over with a first and 10. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and 10 here. Here's Gibson to start the drive. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. From the 44-yard line, here's second down and seven. Gibson again. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? On first and ten, it's Gibson. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Howell from the gun. And that nearly intercepted. But it's incomplete. Now remember, he had a pick earlier, but couldn't reel that one in. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. Throwing here, Howell. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he's going to have a commander's first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. First down, Hal. And this turns into a nice game with a slide at the end. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. Hal out of the shotgun. That's Yannick Ngakwe with a sack. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward, and how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yard. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Here now, third down. Powell to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Partner, they've got one chance left to keep this one going. And I think for you and me, 
Let's think along with their offensive coordinator now has to think back, cycle through every play of this contest, and remember what's worked and what has it. Because right here, he needs the best play of the game in order to keep this one alive. And he missed it. It's no good. And instead of tying it up, they'll remain down by three. A fourth quarter miss like that, there is no lonelier feeling than that kicker right now. As we all know, a lot of these games, they come down to special teams. And when that chance comes, you have to perform in order to help your team get over the top. Could have tied it. Instead, they remain down three. The Bears in good field position to start out first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 48. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And Washington now going to use the first of their three timeouts as he'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. And that one will go down in the books as just a one-play drive and then three points tacked on to the end of it. Second and six. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. The commander is going to use the second of their timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down and now Washington going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play another run second down trying to cover up and he is going to have the Bears first and that should be the capper but they picked up a little bit of yardage there and now in this situation should be in no hurry to run a play really fast let the clock wind down And they'll take a knee as the clock runs under a minute to play. Fields down to a knee here, and that should just about put a bow on this one. in these lower scoring games you know it better than anybody and points are at such a premium but taking care of the football is king they play turnover free from whistle to whistle and they come through with a victory yeah and that's what won them the game because even doing it that way being that clean partner they weren't able to really run away with this game so that tells us just how important it was to make sure you played mistake-free football that led to the victory